Hello, this is David Wallace with PV Reporter. Um, we are reporting live today from the American Society of Hematology in Atlanta, Georgia, 2017. Um, I am here today with Dr. J.J. Collagion uh, from Paris, France. And today we're going to talk about a couple of your studies. And the first one I'd like to talk to you about is the ROPEG interferon alpha 2b induces high rates of clinical and molecular responses in PV. And this is the two year results from the first perspective controlled randomized trial. So Dr. Kalajian, uh, please tell us uh, more about the results from this study. Good morning, David. Good morning. Uh, so we are really happy to present this year the two year results of this trial. You may remember that last year at ASH we presented the one year uh, results. This is indeed the first randomized trial that compared a form, a new form of interferon to hydroxyurea as first line therapy in patients with polycythemia vera. So we were waiting as doctors and probably also some of, of our patients for such a, a trial to show or to confirm that the good results mm -hmm. we reported in, in small studies right. with interferon is indeed relevant, especially compared to the, let's say, the reference treatment today still, that is hydroxyurea. Okay. So what we showed last year after 12 months mm -hmm. was a kind of equivalence between the two drugs to achieve a hematological response, mm -hmm. meaning the control of hematocrit Right. Below 45 without phlebotomy and normalization of leukocytes and platelets in patients who had elevated counts. Mm -hmm. So the two drugs were, were quite equivalent for that. And what is interesting with this two-year analysis is that we, we observed that patients on uh, ROPEG interferon had a continuous increase in the rate of complete response compared to a kind of loss of response for the second year in those who are treated with hydroxyurea. So better results at two years with interferon than with hydrea. Mm -hmm. And also, what is also uh, for us a good confirmation of small studies is that in this prospective trial, we also confirm that the molecular response is better with interferon compared to hydroxyurea. Again, after 12 months, mm -hmm. both drugs were able to reduce uh, the JAK2 mutant Right. Anil burden, the proportion of cells having the JAK2 mutation, but during the second year, we see a continuous decrease of the JAK2 allele burden in patients still treated with interferon compared to a re increase of the JAK2 mutant allele burden during the second year in patients on hydrea. So we had an initial decrease, and then for the second year, the, the, the JAK2 allele burden start to re increase, unfortunately with hydrea, although the patients still have a clinical response. Okay. The blood counts are okay, but we see the mutation going down, but then going back up. Okay. In contrast, on interferon, the control of the, the blood count is perfect, but we see a continuous decrease and a huge difference at 24 months between the two drugs uh, to induce uh, this molecular response. Okay, and uh, a couple points that kind of came to mind for me in uh, reading your study. Um, the first one was uh, when you and I interviewed last year, um, I kind of felt like that wasn't a, a good, um, or shall I say, this is what I expected to mm -hmm. see the second year an improvement versus the first year. Uh, would you agree on that? Yes, absolutely. We, we knew that interferon is a slow acting drug right. uh, in terms of, of real impact on the disease. And if we want to change, as, as I often say, these are not uh, short term diseases, these are for lifelong. Hopefully, right. uh, life expectancy of our patients with PV should be equivalent to the general population. That's what we observed in France. So we have to work for 20, 30, 40 years, hopefully, for most of our patients. Okay. So we don't have to run and have short-term toxicity, but try at least to improve the tolerance of any drug, especially if we want to achieve a long-term benefit for the patients. And for example, in this proud PV trial, uh, there was a concern about toxicity of interferon. At the beginning, we didn't know. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started at very low dose of interferon with a very slow increase. 
So what we observed, for example, is that the patients achi achieved their efficient dose after six months. Okay. So the 12 months evaluation, indeed, they only had six months at the, at the right dose. So we knew that this short term, let's say, evaluation right. should be in favor of Hydrea that uh -huh. goes much quickly uh, to, to efficient dose. So now, after with one more year, we see this benefit uh, more clearly. Okay, and that's an excellent point. Uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of that. Um, and I think that our readers will be interested to hear that because yeah. I know there was a lot of concern of hearing the one-year study mm -hmm. and the two drugs being uh, appearing to be. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm very pleased to hear that. Um, I'm a patient that's on um, Pegasus, so yes. um, that's similar. Um, now, in the U.S., we're certainly looking forward to Ropeg interferon, um, as in Europe. Uh, can you give us an idea of the time frame uh, where it should come forth in uh, Europe approval? Yeah, uh, so the, the, the company who is developing the drug in Europe is named uh, AOP Orphan, has, has started the process with the European agency, the EMA, uh, in February this year. So, uh, and they were waiting to have the two-year results to, to complete the, the, the file and so th now that we have these results they will go back to the agency so we hope since it's an orphan drug designa designation the process is a bit faster than regular drugs let's say so we hope that the approval should be obtained in the beginning of 2018 so early next year mm -hmm. then there will be probably discussion for the price etc so we hope that we can use the drug for our patients for the first time in the middle or last part of, of next year as a regular drug uh, in the pharmacy around the corner. But I know also that the process may be different in the US because unfortunately uh, there are two different companies developing the drug, the right. one in Europe and uh, there's another one, Pharma Essentia, mm -hmm. who takes care of the development of the drug in the US. Okay. So the process probably is different, uh, is certainly different. Right. Uh, what I heard is that it's not third certain that the FDA will accept the results of the proud PV study for registration in the United States. So maybe they may ask for additional studies here. Okay. So for that, I have no information, but I'm afraid it may delay a bit compared to, to Europe, maybe the, 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 the possibility to, to have access to the drug here. And just for our readers' um, information, is that typical for the U.S. to kind of um, maybe not accept what the EMA has held forward or does it depend on the drug or, or It really what? depends on the drug I think and then okay. the size of the of the study uh, this is a relatively small study compared to for example a drug like a, a knife anti-hypertensive drug or a diabetes drug where they include uh, thousands of patients mm -hmm. in both continents so they may actually here it's a small much much smaller of course study okay. so maybe that's the concern okay uh, all right very good I appreciate you giving us the uh, summary on mm -hmm. that 